Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Ferrari 360 under the cover. For those of you that are new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. I really hope you enjoy it. And if you like this kind of content with my own cars, um, a Ferrari 360 Modena, a Mercedes C63 AMG, and new to the channel, a 1970 MG Midget, it'd be great to have you as a subscriber. So in this episode, we're gonna be doing a little bit of uh, maintenance work on the 360, something very simple, but something which I've been wanting to do for a while, and that is to replace the air filters on this car. So when I bought this car, it came fitted with K&N filters. Now, um, those are like a permanent filter that you don't replace, but you just clean and re-oil. And I've been having a few problems with um, the engine not running as smoothly as it should. I've have had to clean the MAF sensors a couple of times. And I have read that these um, k and filters, because they have an oil-based substance on the filter actually to trap the dirt, um, that can actually transfer onto the, the MAF sensor itself. Now, there's a lot of posts online. Um, I don't want to get into the debate about whether this is actually the case with k and filters. I think for all intents and purposes, for the average user who's not going on track, I think using a filter which is a consumable, which you just replace every 12 months, it's far the best way to go for me, so that's what I'm gonna do. So in this video, we're gonna just um, take off the air box covers, we're gonna remove the old can and filters, we're gonna install the replacement um, paper filters. I've already cleaned the MAF sensors, uh, so um, we're hoping to start from a clean sheet there, if you like, and hopefully we won't see uh, that degradation in um, running that I've seen with the car so far. So let's get going. So the air boxes are held in place with these four um, hex bolts here. Um, they're supposed to be uh, captive nuts underneath each of those, but two of these are broken typically. So um, I'm just gonna take out the ones that are, that are not broken. This one has a, has a nut underneath, but it's, It's not captive, so just don't want that to fall down. As you can see, it comes out very easily. Come on, oh, there we go, right. So once we've undone the, the screws there, there's two little clips here, which just undo. And then we can just slide the air box back and take it off, cool. So these are the K&N filters, which are supposedly um, reusable and cleanable and everything. It might be great for, um, for if you want to grab an extra couple of horsepower out of your car for, for racing. But for me, I'd rather have a consumable part that I just simply replace every 12 months or whatever for the cost, you know, 50 bucks or whatever. It's, it's not worth it for my, for my purposes. So these are the standard um, OEM Ferrari air filters. Um, as you can see, they're just um, pleated paper with a rubber seal around the outside and um, a metal uh, honeycomb um, shield on the top to, to keep them in place. So these should just be a straight Replacement seems to fit okay. Actually quite tight fit. For the second one of the air filters. And they do seem a little bit bigger. As I say, they're just struggling to fit quite as neatly as they should. I'm wondering if that is 
Oh no, they're pretty sun. That one's good. Yep. Yep, that fits snugly on there. That's it. Okay, that's pretty much done. Uh, pretty simple. As I say, they seem that seems a little bit tighter than the others, but they're fitting okay. So I'm going to try those uh, paper filters to see if they're any better. Um, and what I might do is I'll, I'll take those old k &N filters and I might just put them in a plastic bag and just leave them for, you know, a couple of weeks and see if there's any deposit of oil kind of evaporating onto the inside of the bag. That might be an interesting experiment to see if there's actually any oil kind of that vaporizes off the off the surface, um, which might give credence to those theories about um, fouling the MAF sensor. Anyway, that's it for the installation. So just going to wait for the weather to improve a little bit and then we'll take her out and uh, do a bit of a test drive. So this is really interesting. I, I put one of these Canaan filters in a plastic bag because I thought I wanted to see whether any of the oil came out. And just look at this. Little droplets of oil on the plastic. I don't know if you can see that. Just all over the inside. If I put a bit of paper in, you'll be able to see it a bit more clearly. See all that oil. There you go. That is all liquid drops of oil that have come out of the filter. And that's just in a couple of hours since I've had it in that plastic bag. Now this might not be a scientific test of how these things are supposed to work, but to my mind, the fact that so much oil comes out of it so easily, you know, on the engine side, this is the engine side, and the air comes in through the bottom and then up through this way, can't be good, can it? Let me know in the comments if you've had any experiences with k &N filters. Uh, in particular, you know, this oil being um, released from the, from the filter element. Before the lawyers get in touch with me, this might just be user error that the previous people who had the car, um, who cleaned the filter and re-oiled it, may have done something silly, over-oiled it or whatever. But as I say, um, I don't think it's a great idea that this much oil can escape from the top side of this filter so easily. So we're out in the Ferrari uh, after we've done that work on the replacing the air filters. I thought I'd just give it a bit of a test drive just to see how it was performing with the air filters, see if there's any difference. It was a very rough start out of the garage. Um, I think that might have been just the ECU is getting used to different airflow, perhaps. Don't know. So we'll just warm it up a bit and then that'll give us a better idea of whether it's running any better or whether there's absolutely no difference. Whatever happens, I think the amount of oil that those K&N filters had within them was just not great. So I think whatever happens, I think it's probably going to be a better option to have just regular paper filters going forward. So we've been driving for about half an hour. Car's nice and warm. Just trying to find some nice back roads that we can get onto. But as I've said before, where I live in Sydney, you've got to drive for about an hour before you get onto any decent country roads. Um, so it feels to be nicely running smoothly with the new filters. I'm assuming that they may 
cause the ECU to do a bit of a recalibration. It's getting maybe less air than it was expecting, so it needs to kind of readjust everything. So we managed to find some back roads. The car seems to be driving really well. We're up near Windsor somewhere, Glenory. Some nice kind of country back roads. Nice to just weave through the countryside rather than having to sit on the freeway the whole time. Obviously it's going to take a bit longer to determine whether these filters make an improvement or whether there's any change in performance. I'm sure there's not going to be anything noticeable. So I'll keep you posted on how the car performs on these filters and um, you know maybe give you an update in a future video. But that's just about it for this video. I um, hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I'd be interested to know your comments and thoughts on the K&N issue, um, whether you've used K&N filters, whether you've had any experience. Um, I'd be really interested to hear uh, what you have to say. Uh, just drop me a comment down below. That'd be great, thank you. So once again, thanks very much for watching. I uh, really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to smash that like. It'd be great to have you as a subscriber and hit that notification bell. You can follow me on Instagram down here. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.